Hey, this is Travis. We're going to go over BitTensor subnet number 64, Shoots. Currently, BitTensor's top subnet, it is fully operational and bringing in revenue. And before we start, remember, none of this is financial advice. Now, Shoots aims to produce a decentralized serverless AI compute platform that enables anyone to deploy and scale AI models seamlessly. What this means in practice for a layman is that you can expect to be able to access and interact with any open source AI model via Shoots, and the subnet takes care of the infrastructure requirements for hosting and deploying the AI. It supports basically any open source AI, from LLMs to image generation to audio to video to music. Put more simply, you can go to Shoots.ai and immediately use any open source model. When you do this, you're invoking a Shoot. Shoots also has an API that allows developers to leverage the subnet and pay for access to higher quality AI models and more throughput. So when a user interacts with an LLM or generates an image or music or whatever job, the Shoots.ai website, which is connected with a validator for the subnet, has the validator send the request to miners to invoke a shoot. So miners compete to execute whatever the user wants, like running AI inference or other jobs. Now, if you enjoy these videos, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell because it really helps me produce more videos. So I really want to drive home how competitive Shoots is with its centralized competitors. Now to do this, we're going to use a site called Open Router to compare models and inference providers with each other. So this is a little bit older model now, DeepSeq R1, and you can see that there's two providers doing it for free right now. One is Shoots and one is Venice. So Venice is a centralized competitor. You can see that the context and max output are exactly the same between the two, cost nothing. So the latency for shoots is a bit higher than Venice, but the throughput here is higher than Venice. Also, you'll note on many of the models that shoots provides, they've got nearly 100% uptime. When you compare it to like a centralized competitor, uh, this makes a lot of sense because miners are competing to provide the inference. So for example, Venice maybe had an outage during this period or in this period and they had to wait for their developers to get up and fix things. Whereas Shoots is a competition between like a whole bunch of providers or miners that are all competing to produce inference. And if they have downtime, their rewards are gonna be reduced. So there's a lot of competition to stay at 100% uptime. So now I just wanna compare this free DeepSeek R1 to the paid. So now I've split my screen into two. On the left, we have the free access to DeepSeek R1 and on the right, we have the paid access to DeepSeq R1. So there's many more competitors providing access to paid DeepSeq R1 inference. You can see the average price here is between two and four dollars. And the average throughput is somewhere between 20 and 40. There's some higher ones here. But you can see that Shoots throughput blows a lot of these guys out of the water. And if Shoots wanted to compete with some of the higher throughput competitors, they certainly could by changing their incentive mechanism. We'll get into that in a bit. And now I just wanna look at one other model here, the Kimi K2 that just came out this week. Again, the free is on the left and the paid is on the right. So you can see that shoots throughput here is 72 tokens per second. When you compare it with the paid ones here, it blows most of them out of the water, including Moonshot itself, the creators of Kimi K2. Now I think there's a bug or something needs to be updated on the site here because shoots access to Kimi K2 is actually paid. You can see here that the cost is 52 cents per million tokens. Now I think that's the total cost, so input plus output. So that's just way cheaper than any other model here. And again, this is due to the competition. Now I'm gonna actually demo using Kimi K2 via shoots in my next video and some other interesting models as well. So let's go over some network stats here. They're almost at 10 trillion total tokens processed. And at their peak, they did almost 160 billion tokens in one day. You can see they support a crap load of models here. And also the number of users since January has grown by over 250X. That's 250X, not 250%, 250X. And they're averaging somewhere between two and 5,000 new users per day. Now, clearly from the screen share, Shoots is capable of handling a huge amount of requests. So let's dig into the incentive mechanism or how miners are rewarded to find out how the subnet supports such a massive amount of requests. At the time of this video, miners are rewarded based on the following. So most importantly, compute time. So this is how quickly a miner can finish a job. 
the lower the better. And then the number of completed invocations. An invocation is a request sent through validators to miners. So the more the better here. And then the number of unique shoots that are currently running. So this would be the amount of simultaneous different shoots or models running on the miner at one time. And then of course they're evaluated based on the average over time. And then lastly, the number of bounties. So there's this bounty system that rewards miners for bringing up resources quickly. So bounties are placed on shoots that aren't currently running. It's sort of an extra incentive for miners to compete to get a shoot running quickly. And then of course, these incentives are constantly being updated and refined with the goal of having miners produce the highest quality for users. The subnet owner can add new ones when needed as well. So shoots miners from anywhere and everywhere in the world compete to achieve the most performant compute. The miners that meet the incentive mechanism the best are rewarded the most. At the time of this recording, the top miners on the subnet are making an absolutely staggering 30,000 US dollars per day from emissions or 400 subnet 64 alpha. This of course will fluctuate. This absurd amount of money isn't free though. Most of it goes to cover server costs. Miners run a variety of GPUs from one single miner key from very cheap GPUs to very powerful GPUs. The game here is building a miner that provisions GPUs based on demand and that can scale these GPUs as needed. The base miner code is pretty good, but miners can stand to earn more by making improvements on it. Shoots is in its own league when it comes to a roadmap. This is because they're already at the point where they're taking payments in Tau for their service. Building a subnet that provides a service valuable enough to pay for is the end goal for subnets, but Shoots is already there. They're now looking at decentralizing model distribution through IPFS, adding support for longer running jobs, preparing to onboard enterprise customers next quarter, and they have plans to support trusted execution environments, and much, much more. See the roadmap on their website for more. Now, Shoots is already accepting fiat payments, and all revenue is used to buy back their alpha token. So anytime somebody buys the service with Tau, the subnet owner uses that Tau to purchase subnet 64 alpha tokens. This essentially creates buy pressure on the alpha token when somebody purchases access to Shoots. However, they don't yet know what they're going to do with this purchased alpha. They mentioned that they may burn it or they may use it in governance somehow. Now on the core team, we have John Durbin, Bon Oliver, and Namory. All are absolute legends of the BitTensor space, probably the most experienced subnet team in BitTensor. You cannot find a more capable team. I was tempted to describe this subnet as an inference subnet, but it has the capability to do way more than just inference. Of course, it can run inference across any open source model, but on top of that, you can run your own custom jobs. And they're looking at using the subnet for training AI as well. So it's kind of like a compute subnet that can run all the things you want to run. So everything from inference to custom jobs to AI training, if you're familiar with AWS Lambda, it's basically a decentralized AWS Lambda. If you want to learn more about Subnet64 shoots, all the links are in the description.